Daddy Bruno. Carl. Psychological moments, but you know, if he'd held out a little longer, I think I'd have confessed to that murder. <laughs> well, good night, Lieutenant. Back up, or rather, more. <laughs> Incorporated going to checkmate the checkmating of checkmate. Fascinating problem. Almost poetic, isn't it? What I'd really like to know is when can I shave off this thing? So, very soon, I hope. In fact, the very moment that my old friend, Dr. Hyatt, is dead. He's been tying these things all his life. Carl, once and for all, will you two stop acting like a pair of old hens? Alonzo Pace Graham invited me to dinner. I accept it. Will you walk into my parlor, says the spider? Now, look, the one place this fly will be safe in is in the spider's parlor and in the spider's house. If either of you knew anything about Alonzo... Oh, I know he promised to kill you after the trial. Yeah, the most dangerous criminal mind of the century. Oh, come, come on. Fifteen years in prison will have chastened him somewhat. <laughs> It'll be like it. Oh? Huh? Helena, <laughs> oh, I, uh, I was afraid you wouldn't get my message before I had to leave. I got all of your messages. And the flowers, they're lovely. I, I don't know how to apologize. Oh, Carl, we're not children. I, I won't pretend that I'm not disappointed, but after all, one broken appointment in over six months. Carl, you know how much our friendship has meant to me, especially now, and... There'll be other evenings. Of course. Thank you, my dear. Oh, there's my cab. So are you, Stan? He's getting used to dangerous dinner dates. How is the Mary Widow? Mrs. Quattrell is a charming and intelligent woman. And I don't see nearly as much of her as I'd like to. Her husband is a pathological troublemaker, apparently, and, well, until the divorce is final, she wants to avoid any gossip that might compromise it. Well, didn't you have a date tonight? Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, I better get going before she blows a gasket. Uh-huh. Well, another thing about the mature woman is that she doesn't bug you. Oh, uh, Don, you wanted to look at those Valdiviva letters. They're on the desk right beside you with my preliminary notes. Hmm? Oh, thanks. These should keep me busy. Oh, Carl, uh, call the office when you get back here tonight, will you? Oh, yes, Mother. And keep the nursery lights on. <laughs> Well, have fun tonight. Oh, yeah, I will. Oh, uh, no work too hard. Oh, no, no, I'll, I'll turn in as soon as Carl calls. Good night. Good night.
hope you're forgiving you household for, for boring you with a grand tour. <laughs> of course. I needed the exercise after that dinner. <laughs> Your furnishing? Oh, a few things are mine. I, I just got them out of storage. Ah, no trouble getting into the country. Oh, no. After all, I, I paid my debt to society. I do have some sizable interest in the United States. They need my attention. Legitimate interest? Some. <laughs> I, I think you'll find this the most comfortable. Hmm? Thank you so much. Very good, sir. No, oh, you remembered my brand. I remember a lot of things. And my camera bear. May I pour you a drink? If you please. Just up to about three months ago, my, my surroundings were a little different. Tell me, Doctor, uh, were you surprised at my invitation? <laughs> were you surprised at my acceptance? Oh, you never could resist a good dinner. <laughs> what a fascinating study in personality. Yes? Oh, I admit it, you've always fascinated me. Oh? Oh, yes, a man with all your gifts, brains, education, charm. You could have succeeded in any field of endeavor. Instead, you embarked upon a career of cold-blooded criminality. You became the incarnation of unmitigated evil. <laughs> uh, a self-made Lucifer. <laughs> Does it please you to think so? Frankly, yes. You know, long ago you had more money than any man could want or need. You you could have... I could have retired and settled down and then what? Die of boredom? No, 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 doctor, no. Now as long as there are fools to be manipulated and good people to be deplored and last but not least, police to be laughed at. Yeah. Madness. Beneath the brilliance, the smooth facade, the moral intelligence of a rabid dog. Pity. And uh, quite unchanged. I could say the same about you. <laughs> me? Oh, dear me, no. A quiet university professor teaching theory from long forgotten cases. I see. What about that, uh, that organization you're associated with? Organization? Oh, checkmate. <laughs> They consult me occasionally on technical matters, as do the police, as do others. Eager young men, but unseasoned. Mm. Idealistic, but uh, hardly a threat to the criminal classes. You disappoint me, Professor. Why? Had you hoped that I'd still be a worthy adversary? <laughs> no. You know, Doctor, I was wondering during all these lonely years, after all, you were the only one to catch me. Tell me, what little mistake did I make? That'll be my secret, I think. Oh, but I'd, I'd so much like to know. Perhaps, someday. Someday, but, but someday may be too late. Even a comparatively imminent someday. You mean, I won't be able to tell you because I'll be dead? Yes. couldn't tell if they were making an atom bomb in there. Not from the outside, anyway. Yeah. Hey. Maybe we got excited for nothing. He won't like us playing nursemaid. For Dr. Hyatt, sir. Hmm? Oh, yes, yes. I asked him to come back at 10. Tell him I'll be right there. Yes, sir. Oh. Just when it was going to get in first thing. Oh. You have a plan, I'm sure. Several. One which, no matter what the police may suspect, could never be brought home to you. Hmm? I guarantee you, you'll be surprised. Perhaps you will be. 
Oh, my dear friend, you, you, you must give me the name of your chef. I'm sure my club would be delighted to have him on its staff. Uh, oh, what? Uh, after you've been eliminated. <laughs> Good night, my friend. Good night, Carl. Sleep well. Get the cheese knife. I'll point out the things to you upstairs very long. Sister, did you get it? All of us, sir. Good. Bruno! Come in, Bruno. Sit down. We've got a lot of work to do tonight. That's correct, operator. Chief Inspector Mapleton. You can find him through Scotland Yard, London, England. Yes, yes, I'll take the call at the number I gave you. Thank you. Well, did you make much progress on the Valdiviva letters? I, uh, I had a headache. I went for a drive, got a little air. Really? Hi. Saw the light on, thought I'd drop by. <sighs> Another precinct heard from. Early date, wasn't it? Oh, uh, Joan had a headache. Hmm, seems to be catching. Perhaps there's something in the air outside uh, Pace Graham's house. Hmm? Thought you weren't going to tell. Oh, very good. Mm. Were that obvious? Well, I didn't see you, if that's what you mean. But it's exactly the sort of unimaginative and useless thing I'd expect of the two of you. Nothing to worry about, hmm? Of course, you just call Scotland Yard to report a, a dinner date. Oh, that's the one thing, carrying them out's another. Which brings me to the reason why I'm here. I'll be out of touch after tomorrow, but... Don't let that worry you. Oh, no. No, no. Don't let that worry. Pace Graham seems like a patient man. How long can you afford to hide out? I have no intention of hiding out. No, I'm merely changing my base of operations. I need time to plan a counterattack to, to build an organization. I thought you already had one. Checkmate? <laughs> Dear me, no. Not only are you known to be connected with me, but to be quite frank, neither of you have the subtlety nor the slightest degree of the finesse necessary to deal with a man. Well, I'm glad to know you think so highly of us. My life is at stake this time. I can't afford to be sentimental. Oh, yes, you've been lucky for a pair of amateurs. But I can tell you now, if it hadn't been for my intervention, you'd have stumbled into disaster half a dozen times. Uh, why, if you got into this now, you'd end up getting all three of us killed. Well, there's a mention of Santa Barbara in those letters. Look for the safe deposit box there. Well, if I don't see you for a few days, good luck on the Valdiviva case. What a ham. We'll need extra legs on this one. Tim Haney's free. All right, I'll dig up a couple other guys in the morning, since he won't cooperate. He thinks Pace Graham is dangerous, all right. So dangerous he'd rather take his own chances than let us get involved. He's also a stubborn old goat. So? So? So we'll get ourselves involved. Then he'll have to bail us out.
He said to wait. Well, he did. Now, what was that? That was me. Did you say Corey? Haven't I heard that name before? Checkmate Incorporated. Oh, yes. Won't you sit down? Summers, hasn't that young man finished yet? I believe he's upstairs, sir. You must forgive us. This morning, our fuse has been blowing out every ten minutes. Now, what was it you wanted? Number one, to get a look at you. You don't impress me much. No? I'm sorry. No, thanks. Well, that's the modern equivalent of bread and salt. You refuse it? In spades. I'm not a guest, you're not a host, and the rules of hospitality don't apply. Number two. Lay off Carl Hyatt. He told you, huh? I am surprised. You know, the way he was trying to keep you out of this, he reminded me of a mother partridge trying to lead the hunter away from her young. He didn't have to tell me. I... Well, have you found it? Well, it's hard to trace a wire in an old house like this. I like to rip up the plastic till I get an idea. Which I'm sure will be never. But right now I'm having a little conference. These sick walls wouldn't be surprised or a mice. The morons of the world unite. Go on, Mr. Coy. I've said it. Did it ever occur to you that involving yourself in a situation like that might be dangerous for you? Now you listen good. Checkmate was set up to stop jokers like you. If we don't, and anything happens to Carl Hyatt, we'll do everything we can to see the police hang the rap on you. And if that doesn't work, I'll take care of you myself, personally. Evidence or no evidence. You honestly expect me to believe a performance like this? I mean, battering your way in and talking like a... like a shamus? Ever heard a playback of the way you sound? You're deliberately going out of your way to insult me, aren't you? Just declaring checkmate in. Mr. Corey, in that case, it would be rude to leave you out. Let me assure you, I never intended to. So long as we understand each other, Mr. Pace Grant. Dining room, library, upstairs hall, and uh, one bedroom. Yeah, they ought to do it, Tim. If you hear anything at all out of line, you can hold me on that. I'll banish your worries. Wherever your client is, he must be paying you plenty. If our client knew we were working on it, he'd go up and smoke. Uh, I should be very angry with both of you, but... And no more of this lone wolf stuff. No running away from us. It's done now. We're in this together. Good. Then you'd better let us know what to be ready for. <laughs> He's had 15 years in which to make his plans and three months since his release to put them into operation. No, I can only tell you what not to expect. Bullet in the back, a bomb in the mail, poison in the soup. <laughs> that wouldn't satisfy his ego. No, he'll want to baffle me, discredit me, humiliate me. When you read his dossier, you'll understand why I respect him. The fancier he gets, the more chances we'll have to trip him up. Well, Judge checking the neighborhood for any visitors. Ken's got a wire at the inside. I'll check immigration for his port of entry. Yes, and I'm expecting a call from the overseas operator. Scotland Yard may be able to tell me the name of the associates he kept in contact with. Well, that'll be good, I promise. <laughs> husband again. Oh, yes, Carl, I'm afraid it is. And, and you're the only one that I can turn to. 
No, not here. But somewhere that we can talk privately. Well, my club, then? I'll meet you in the foyer at uh, 6.30? Right. And Helena, whatever the trouble is, I'll do my best. But I'm not infallible. Aren't you, Carl? Thank you. Goodbye. Leo Club at 6.30. The chink in every man's armor. Wouldn't you love to know mine? But I caution you, you better stay convincing when you meet him. I haven't much choice, have I? You see, Carl, I must have that money in my hands by tomorrow. Oh, I'm sorry, I... I sound as if I'm blaming you for my stupidity, but... But if my husband finds out, I... Yes, he's a dangerous man. Oh, uh, Teddy, there may be a phone call for me. I told the long-distance operator I'd be here. By the way, your mother's better, I hope. Yes, thank you, doctor. We brought her home last week. Oh, good, good. <laughs> now, the 20,000. You had bonds for that amount, which you awarded him by your interlocutory decree. I thought it was worth it to be free of it, at last. Mm, but unfortunately, since then you had given them to another man for investment, and now, now he refuses to return them to you, is that it? I haven't been very lucky with the people I trust. Not till you. And you thought I was so intelligent about money, and I... Well... I kept hoping. Well... Well, do you have proof? No chance for him to deny it. Deny it? I have the letters right here. Well, if he still has possession, it shouldn't be too difficult. He lives in the city. Yes, Marin County. The bonds are right there in his house. Then he just laughed at me on the telephone this afternoon. Well, I'll speak to a friend of mine on the police force. Oh, the police can be very discreet. The police... I see. Well, unfortunately, at the moment, my dear, I'm engaged in something... I know that... something very important. I... I shouldn't have asked you, Carl. Just a foolish woman and a... a sordid little swim. No, It's no. all right, Carl. I'll, I'll see him myself. And... and he won't laugh at me tonight. Oh, Helena, please... <laughs> Now, don't try to frighten me, Carl. I, I, I'm sorry if you're disappointed in me. I, I'm sorry. Helena! Please. Helena! That cab that just pulled away. Far off? Yes, yes. Like in the movies. Now, honey, please. children. Accomplishing anything? Trying to figure out a pattern. Even Pace Graham has to have one. Hello, Tim. Anything doing? Not at this end. The guy's a music lover. I've had Beethoven coming out of my ears all night. Here, listen. What, Tim? Oh, the sherry. Okay, Tim, will you let me know, huh? Right. And would you turn the volume down a bit, please? Yes, sir. Is that more satisfactory? Quite. Thank you, Summers. 
hurry in another minute, you'll lose it. I don't make the traffic, mister. Well, he seems to be getting through it all right. Blackmail. Cheap blackmail. Give me those letters. Oh, no, I won't. What would your friends on the police force think if they knew what the great doctor Hyatt was doing inside? Don't press me too far, Helena. I might just... They'll make beautiful readers. Think of the figure you'll cut. The great lover. The irresistible Don Juan. Well, you're a fat middle-aged... No! Helena? Helena? Hello, Faye. Are you all right? Ye yes, I just stumbled. Are you sure? My dear young woman, this is hardly the time. Please, dear. His bark is worse than his bite. You, uh, you go on to the exchange or you'll be late. I'll call you later. Goodbye, Faye. Now will you be sensible? You mean submit to this? Oh, no, Helena. You'll find out what kind of a bite I have. I'm not afraid of you. I don't think this hurts any more than necessary. Did you sterilize it? Then after that idiot driver got me thoroughly lost in the backwards, I had to wait another 20 minutes while he hiked to a station for gasoline. And you just happened to neatly be put out of action for a little over three hours. Helena? Oh, that, that's impossible. Why, well, I know her background, her tastes. Well, after all, I, I, I met her quite by chance at a concert. A pickup. And Delilah couldn't have been more surprised. Did you get a good look at the driver? Certainly. I noted down his number and the license. So you weren't really quite sure? Well, at least you haven't lost all your marbles. Something tells me we'd better have a talk with a lady. Come on, Carl. Yes, yes, I... I'm afraid I'd like to talk with Helena myself. Homicide. Notify the hospitals. Put out on all points on the woman's convertible. You want to check those descriptions again? The woman, about 5'5", five, five, blonde, blue eyes, 118 pounds. Wearing a black dress, gray mink stole. The man, 5'10", heavily built, full beard, slouch hat, carries a walking stick. Oh, Sergeant, I'm Dr. Carl Hyatt. What happened here? I, I saw the lieutenant's car outside. What? Yeah, yeah, right. In here, Doctor. Lieutenant, Mrs. Quattrell, is she? This is the way we found the place. Lab boys haven't even got here yet. Her convertible is missing from out front. Mrs. Quattrell is a friend of Dr. Hyatt's. He's been trying to reach her. Yes, I was with her earlier this evening. Here? No, no, I've never been in this apartment. She preferred to meet me outside. I see. Yes, you see, her divorce wasn't final, and she was afraid of any gossip that might compromise it. 
Sergeant, ask Miss Raison to step in here. All right, Tom, cut the mystery. What happened? Well, according to the girl next door, Mrs. Quattrell was shaking down her boyfriend for some incriminating letters, and they got rough about it. Yes, she carried them in this. She worked for a telephone service. When she didn't hear from Mr. Quattrell, she called a couple of times and finally came home. Uh, what is it, Carl? Lieutenant, have you heard anything? No, not yet. Miss Faye Razan, Don Corey. How do you do? Hello. Sorry to bother you, but would you describe the man again? I think I can do that for you, Lieutenant. Someone who resembled me. Is that correct, Miss Razan intended to resemble me? Let her answer, Carl. Carl. That's what Helena called him. Carl Hyatt. Why, he's the same face, the same voice, everything. Of course, he's the one. Or somebody impersonating him. It's possible, Mr. Razan. The beard, the way he's dressed, pillow under the belt. Thank you. Of course, you're all friends of his. Helena said that, too. She said, wait until your friends, the police, find out what you've been doing on the side. Really? I was standing as close to him as I am right now, Lieutenant. It wasn't the first time, either. If you don't believe me, you can ask the, the newspaper boy, the manager. The whole neighborhood knew about it. About what? I'll ask the Miss Rizan. By all means, Lieutenant. Thank you. Sure, he can come in. Don, did you get anything? Jed's checked every cab garage in the city. No driver has the number Carl gave us. And no cab took a fare to Marin County last night. Mm. Well, Lieutenant's becoming quite distressed. And what fresh good news do you have for us? Blood type checks. The resigned girl gave us the name of Mrs. Cottrell's doctor. Hypodermic would suit the purpose. You think she's alive? Of course. If she wasn't, you'd have found a stone dead in that apartment floor. That's exactly what would appeal to Pace Graham's sense of humor, to have me prosecuted for a murder that never happened and a body that will never be found. Why don't you drag him down here, Tom? You're wasting time. On what grounds? He wasn't keeping company with her. The servants say they never laid eyes on that stuff. Yeah. All right, have them sign statements and they can go. Don, will you try to pound it through his head? Oh, I realize how serious this is, Lieutenant, probably more than both of you. Tell me, how many witnesses have put the finger on me through this uh, viewing room mirror? Up to now, eight. Eight? <laughs> what kind of witnesses? For all you know, they're good citizens. Most of them didn't even know each other. And the whole bunch, three speeding tickets and the jaywalker. Well? The cab driver has identified him as a man he picked up a block away from the club, with the woman. They fought all the way to a club called the Blue Poodle. Made such a scene there, they were asked to leave. Took another cab and went back to the apartment. Leaving a trail as wide as a Sherman tank. Do you really think Carl is stupid enough? When a man his age gets hooked. My age? When a man any age goes overboard for a woman, they throw the rules out the window. Those witnesses had a good look and fair light. Yes, the resemblance must have been remarkable. Training, makeup, perhaps even plastic surgery. No doubt it took months to find the right man. It's a nice story, Carl. You put one answer ahead of us all the way. You mean Pace Graham has. But you don't believe that. I wish I could. Brand. Where? All right, bring it down. Get the Raison girl down here again to identify it. Carl. How did you know the body would never be found? Because I'm morally certain there never was one. If there was, you'd know how to dispose of it. I should hope so. Let's have a Tom. They located Mrs. Quattrell's car. Blood stains on the upholstery and a woman's shoe caught in the seat. And Helena. 
It was parked on a cliff overlooking the ocean near Point Malloy. The currents there could sweep a body straight out to sea. <sighs> well, as Jed would say, me and my big mouth. I thought things were bad enough this morning. But if they don't find it, then It's they... been known to happen. If there's a strong enough presumption of death. Well, they can't hold in the night anyway. I got Dan Barton down there taking care of the legal end. Where are you going? Well, I... Don, the police have to be ethical. But I don't. Jed, you'd be dead. And Carl would be a prophet. He wouldn't appreciate it. Now, why don't you stick around and keep in touch with Tim and the rest? But keep check on that phony cab driver. If Mrs. Quattrell is alive, they may try to get her out of town. Where are you going? For the past month, somebody's been masquerading as Carl around that apartment house. If I can pin just one witness down to, to an exact date, an exact time when we can prove that Carl was somewhere else, I... Jed, I'll see you later. Check me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Tim. What? Yeah. You better get down here. It sure sounds like something's going on. That's me coming through the door. Just went down in the elevator. No, I'm not putting a tail on him. He's not the type to skip out. Thirty-three thirty Union, please. Come again. Thirty-three thirty Union. If you're looking for a cop to signal, I wouldn't. Personal portraits of your friends and loved ones. Instant service. He's not dead. He isn't even doped too heavy. See? He moves. Where is he? Where nobody will ever find him if you don't play ball. Still want the same address? No. I assume you have your instructions. keep a diary. Tell me, where were you on the night of, of June the 15th? I'm sorry, I know he's your friend. And Mrs. Quattrell was yours. A neighbor. When I lost my other job, Helena got me this job with her phone service. What difference does it make? She's dead. And if she isn't? They had me downtown, Mr. Corey. I had to identify her shoe. Oh, she never pretended to be a saint, but she didn't deserve that. Men had always kicked her around, and she was just kicking back. How much did she tell you? She showed me a bundle of letters. Said they meant big money to her. Not the man's name or what was in them. Just enough. All this talk about some kind of conspiracy. Two men that look alike. Look. You saw the real Dr. Hyde for the first time this morning. Didn't you notice any difference? Anything at all? No. Well, maybe his voice was a little more... What? Authoritative, I guess. But that's only natural. He was upset before. Well, it can't be. It can't? Then all the rest might be true. Well, if Elena were still alive, where would she... she be? Yes, Miss Rita. Stay away one or two nights occasionally. Just thought you had another man on the street. Where? I don't know where. Just give me a number once where I could reach her. Just me, not the other girls on the switchboard. 
I think it's unlisted. Quite, thank you, sir. I see. I underestimated you, Alonso. Prison walls couldn't prevent you from making your arrangements. Then again, you always did prefer to work through intermediaries. Yes, my agents found Bruno and this perennial sophomore here. He used to record some of your lectures at the university. Mm -hmm. And Elena, how did you persuade her to join you? Oh, that's the usual combination. Oh, yeah. Blackmail, threats, money. No wonder your associates love you. They obey me. In fact, Elena had become quite barky when I arrived, but uh, still firmness took care of that. Yes, now your plans have matured and I've been delivered into your hands. Surely you don't intend to kill me in your own house? Me? I don't intend to kill you at all. Huh? No, I left some clues for Mr. Coy. Not too easy, but I expect him to be able to find at least one. And Jet so? Oh, they'll find him somewhere, not far from here. Quite unarmed, but he won't have the faintest idea of what happened to him. Now, with checkmate is armed, he's a mentally double factor. Oh, yeah. Don't confuse youth with ineffectiveness, Alonzo. If 
was Carl. Yes, it was Carl. No, no. I will not permit you to take your feelings out on me. It's tragic, Mr. Corey, but uh, I'm convinced the police will find it justifiable. Shall we call him? Do. Oh, yeah, I'm a bruise, I fear, but it's been quite a while since my commando days. After you, gents. Well, look at all the fun I met. Oh, uh, she told me about the big plan after she untied me. You know, Doctor, I still think she likes you. Well, shall we wait in the library? Well, you can always send her cigarettes if worse comes to worse. Tell me, Carl, what mistake did I make this time? You pride yourself on being inhuman. You people are objects. You've never looked into the eyes of another man as a friend. That's something no makeup, no impersonation, no distance can counterfeit. As before, you forgot the human touch. Lieutenant Brand, please.